Currently, only one company globally possesses EUV lithography machine manufacturing technology, ASML. However, ASML will not sell its EUV lithography machines to China due to both European restrictions and interference from the United States. While many believe that immersion DUV lithography machines can also be used to manufacture 5 nanometers or even 3 nanometers chips, this technology actually has many drawbacks. Its yield rate is too low, its cost is too high, its production efficiency is low, and its technical difficulty is extremely high, making it uneconomical from an overall benefit perspective. Therefore, for manufacturing chips with 5 nanometers and below process technology, EUV lithography machines are a more ideal choice. Given this, China's research and development of EUV lithography machines is imperative and unavoidable. A lithography machine has three core systems, the EUV light source system, the projection lens system, and the dual stage system. This leads to a crucial question. Among these three core systems, which one is the easiest for China to master? and which one is the most difficult. To summarize, relatively speaking, the easiest system to overcome is the dual-stage system, while the most difficult is not the EUV light source system, but rather the projection lens system. Okay, I will continue writing as requested. Here is the continuation. Among the three core systems, the dual-stage system has a relatively lower technical threshold. This system mainly solves the problem of synchronous movement between the wafer and the mask, with the core being precision mechanical control and positioning algorithms. China has accumulated significant experience in CNC machine tools and high-precision motion control. Companies like Huashua Precision Technology have achieved nanometer-level positioning accuracy in their dual-stage systems. Although ASML uses magnetic levitation technology to achieve astonishing acceleration, a domestic solution could potentially achieve similar performance through a combination of an air-bearing platform and advanced control algorithms. It is worth noting that this system also involves real-time measurement feedback technology, which is precisely where China's quantum measurement technology excels. While the EUV light source system is generally considered the most challenging, there are actually technological breakthroughs possible. The Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics has achieved a 50 watt power output for its carbon dioxide laser plasma light source. While this is still short of ASML's 250 watts, the path to power improvement is clear through optimization of target material formulations, such as tin alloy microdroplets and laser frequency. More importantly, with the support of the National Major Project on Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography Light Source, China has built a complete light source testing and verification platform. This end-to-end R&D capability is more strategically significant than simply focusing on power specifications. The real bottleneck lies in the projection lens system. This system composed of six aspherical mirrors, requires surface roughness at the atomic level, below 0.1 nanometers, and a reflectivity of over 70% on multilayer mirrors. Zeiss of Germany has developed ion beam polishing compensation technology for this purpose, accumulating over 30 years of know-how. 
Even more challenging is the fact that the lens system requires a complete set of computational lithography software, from optical design and thermal deformation compensation to aberration correction. ASML's algorithm database, maintained with an annual investment of over 2 billion euros, is its core competitive advantage. Although China has established objective lens R&D at the Changchun Institute of Optics, Fine Mechanics and Physics, it still lags behind by more than two generations in key processes such as deterministic polishing and in-situ inspection. It is worth considering that EUV R&D cannot simply follow the two bombs, one satellite model. Lithography machines are essentially commercial products, requiring the construction of an industrial ecosystem encompassing Zeiss, optics, Trump for lasers, and Emeco process technology. China is building a collaborative innovation network through the Zero Two Special Project, for example, the lasers from Beijing Kui Hongyuan, and the system integration from Shanghai Microelectronics have already formed a synergy. The future breakthrough path may be, first, achieving domestic substitution for dual-stage lithography, then, leveraging the light source system to stimulate international cooperation, and finally, overcoming the objective lens system through joint research and development by industry, academia, and research institutions. This journey is destined to be long, but each partial breakthrough is reshaping the global semiconductor power landscape. Despite continued U.S. restrictions on China, a series of breakthroughs in domestically developed technologies have amply demonstrated that containment measures cannot halt China's progress. Currently, China ranks among the world's leaders in fields such as artificial intelligence, electric vehicles, and aerospace, and in some areas, it has even surpassed others. The Economist, with its cover story, This Could Make China Stronger, points out that U.S. technological blockades have actually spurred a comprehensive and accelerated upgrade of Chinese industries. The National Innovation Index Report 2024 shows that China ranks 10th globally in the National Innovation Index with its rate of progress among the fastest in the world. Facts have proven that openness and cooperation are the right path to promote global development. Those who go against the trend and defy globalization will inevitably be ruthlessly abandoned by the times.